that was invisible from the ground. Sometimes Corona shot color and infrared film, but the resolution quality was relatively poor. Color pictures were useful when analysts needed to monitor crop growth or mining activity. Perhaps the most dramatic Corona photos were taken in 1969 when the superpowers were racing to put men on the moon. The Soviets had built a 315-foot conical-shaped rocket, probably the largest rocket ever made. This is the rocket sitting on its launch pad, being readied for its first flight. And this is the aftermath of its disastrous launch. The rocket exploded on the pad with a blast so powerful that its launch gantry and electrical tower were knocked to the ground. There's so much information on there, you sometimes wonder, did they ever actually get everything you could get off of any one negative? And the answer is, in all probability, they did on the negatives of great interest, but that was you know, relatively few negatives. This is Lockheed's HIVOS test facility. Here, satellites are raised into a vacuum chamber and subjected to the extreme conditions of space. For more than 12 years, engineers used this room to put corona satellites through their paces. As new technologies developed throughout the 1960s, they were quickly integrated into the spaceship. We started off, we had vacuum tubes. And then we went to transistors, and we went to the more modern electronics. And so for all the time, the reliability equation is getting much, much better. But to get a given transistor or a given mechanical system, like the camera, to run for that long, you pretty much have to go to some very, very special things. The first thing, make sure it's built out of very, very good parts. You can't just take any old run-of-the-mill Radio Shack parts and build a satellite. We had to get very, very excellent, good, clean parts. The second thing is you have to test them very, very carefully, make sure what you have. And then ultimately, you have to design in redundancy. So we called it belt and suspenders redundancy, so that if one failed, you go to another system to back it up. This is the final version of the Corona camera, the KH-4B. First flown in 1967, this camera was fitted with two lenses and two film buckets, effectively doubling its useful lifespan. Stronger rockets also let the satellite carry 160 pounds of film on board, a 120 pound improvement. By the late 60s, Corona had flown well over 100 missions, but the satellite's useful life was coming to an end. Powerful new systems that didn't use film were on the way. But Corona's reliability and relatively low cost made planners loath to cancel it. Corona was very early in the um, application of space for any purpose. And uh, it did pioneer the recovery of payloads from space, uh, high-performance imagery in space, uh, three-axis stabilization of camera or of, uh, space systems, all of which were absolutely vital. If they hadn't been done in Corona, they would eventually have been done some other way. But this was uh, really the very fastest and the cheapest way to do it, even though there were an even dozen failures, so-called failures, where uh, no film was returned with imagery on it. Uh, yet at a cost of $7 million or so per launch, $850 million for the 145 launches, as I recall. Uh, that was a cheap price to pay. Corona was the first successful U.S. space program, and it managed to outlive NASA's Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs as well. By 1972, when the last and final Corona satellite was launched, Americans had already wearied of men walking on the moon. But Corona's long-term legacy extended far beyond its technical accomplishments. 
you know, we all felt a part of something that was going on that was terribly important to national defense and to national policy. And uh, there was not the usual squabbling between contractors, and there was not the usual squabbling between agencies. You know, the CIA and the Air Force got along. And we were all working for what appeared to be a very important end goal. And um, we all felt pretty good about that. This is the headquarters of the National Reconnaissance Office. A joint CIA and Department of Defense agency, the NRO builds and maintains the U.S. fleet of space-based spies. The agency is the institutionalized form of the partnership that began with Richard Bissell and the Air Force back in the days of the U-2 and Corona. Formed in the early 60s, the NRO was so secret that until 1992, even its name was classified. But now that the Cold War has ended, the agency is taking a cautious step out of the shadows. The Corona program has been declassified, and its pivotal role in the history of aerospace and intelligence gathering has finally been revealed. Recently, the NRO turned over all two million feet of Corona film to the National Archives, it is hoped that this detailed record of the Earth's surface will be closely studied by historians and environmentalists. Corona imagery is also being funneled into an effort that would have been unthinkable when the satellite was flying. A joint U.S. and Russian working group is currently exploring ways that both nations can use their collection of satellite spy photos to help clean up the environment. The satellite that answered so many Cold War questions may have yet another life, this time solving the peacetime puzzles of tomorrow.